Okay, hey everybody. Uh, today we're gonna talk about action-packed composability, CI/CD to the rescue. Um, if anything, these slides are gonna be bomb, so I hope you enjoy. All right, let's get into it. So, first thing I wanna start with is a story that if people have listened to my talk, they're probably tired of this story, but I'm not. Basically, I once worked at a startup that had what I call nightmare midnight releases. Essentially, every weekend night um, or many week weekend nights, that's when we would release our code. We couldn't do it when anybody was on the platform, like any of our users, um, because we had such a terrible CI CD pipeline um, that we had to, or none at all actually, but we had to essentially take down the whole site and add in the new code that we needed and then put it back up, which really sucked for me as like a 22, 23, 24 year old, because on a Saturday night, I want to be having fun. Um, so that was pretty bad. And in addition to that, if we made any mistakes or human error, which I do a lot, that made the process even longer. So I kind of was like so in love or fell in love with GitHub Actions when I went to a new company and I saw them use this to release their code. It took them like five minutes and if there was any mistakes, it's really easy for them to roll back the, that um, those issues. And I was like, wow, what is this? I'm really into it. Um, and those two different experiences really taught me how important and valuable it is to implement a CI CD pipeline even for any personal or freelance projects, because I'm really not trying to go through the, the process or the issue of having to take down all my code and wait for nobody else to be on it. And it just really helps with my own sanity as a developer. So before I get into all that, I will tell you who I am. And you're probably still wondering, like, what does GitHub Actions have to do with composability? But don't worry, I will tell you soon. So my name is Rizal. I am a junior developer advocate at a company called GitHub, um, the place where you all host your code. Um, in the past, I was a software engineer. I also am a leader at an organization called G-Code House, which teaches women of color and non-binary people of color to code. Obviously, I like empowering and teaching people about tech. So, yep, that's me. And also, I'm a little bit passionate about social media or, or addicted, whichever word you want to use. So go ahead and follow me at Black Girl Bytes on Twitter, dev.2, Hashnode, GitHub, TikTok, YouTube, whatever, all that good stuff. The only place that's different is Twitch at Black Girl Bytes 1 because I locked myself out of my account. So let's get back into the tech stuff, because um, who cares about me? But if you're wondering what GitHub Actions are, they are open source customizable automation for your repository that are written in YAML. You can essentially automate anything, whether it's a push or a pull request. Um, you can automate things to happen, um, or you can automate things to happen when those events are triggered. So. Let's get to the real question. What does GitHub Actions have to do with composability? You're at a composability summit and you're like, why is this girl talking about CI CD? I actually think, so I've been learning a lot about composable software architecture and I've learned that it's replaceable, pluggable, scalable, and can continuously be improved. At the very least, GitHub Actions shares a lot of um, similarities or parallels with this, but I think it also enables you to create composable software and it's actually kind of composable itself. So let me get into how and why I think that. So actions are replaceable, right? They live in a file or a folder actually called github.github slash .github workflows. And these are YAML files. And this is how GitHub recognizes that you want this YAML file to execute or trigger as an action. And I think that if you wanted to replace an action, it wouldn't actually break your own software. It may break your, your CI CD pipeline for a while if you don't plan it out right, but it's not gonna break, break your software if you replace your action with another action, or if you decide, I don't wanna use GitHub Actions anymore, I wanna use Travis CI CD, CD or whatever it's called, Travis CI, or if you want to do the vice versa of that, it's not gonna actually break your software. I also think it's pluggable. Basically right now on the marketplace, like at the time that I'm speaking, we have over 14K actions on the marketplace, 
built by different people in our community. You can make your actions open source and public and anybody can plug it into their software and use it when they need to. Um, so you can say, oh, cool, this is a really cool action that I like. And instead of you creating it all from scratch, you can just plug it into your software, into your code base, into your repository, and it will work just fine. You can also use this concept called reusable workflows among any of your, rep um, your personal projects within your repositories, you can reuse different workflows. Also, actions are scalable. Um, you can use GitHub's runner or you can use a, a self-hosted runner and you can configure that self-hosted runner to auto scale based on different webhook events that occur. And last but not least, they are easy to improve. As you continue to improve your software, um, you can also improve your actions. And easy being a relative word, but because YAML is an expressive language, and I think it looks a little bit easier on the eyes, and it's a little bit easier to manipulate, it doesn't take that heavy of a lift to go ahead and improve your whole CI CD pipeline if you're like, oh, wait, I should have added this. Um, and this makes more sense where my project has grown and it needs a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna go through a couple of my favorite actions. They are not necessarily CI CD actions, but I just wanna go through them just so you can see how powerful um, and amazing GitHub actions are and you can geek out with me. So one of them is the take action. And this is a, an action that exists in a project called Open Sauce, which is a project that's maintained by my manager. Basically, what he has is if you comment dot take, it'll assign the issue to you and you'll get a comment that says, hey, this is issue is assigned to you. And if you need help, join our discord. The reason why this is so cool, in my opinion, is because as a new contributor, one of the issues I had was getting assigned the issue. I was kind of confused at which issue I could take. I would like comment, hey, can I have this issue? And then there'll be like seven more people that comment, can I have this issue? And I would never get assigned it. Um, so I think this takes the onus off of the maintainer who's trying to manage and juggle a whole bunch of things. And it, let, it allows me to get that like quick gratification, like, yes, I got assigned this. I'm going to start working on it right away. There's also this action called top five, which my team uses as like a weekly standup, I guess. Um, standup is much different in DevRel, at least from my experience, than it is as a software engineer. But I think you can use it for an async standup as well, basically, um, or async daily software engineering standup. But basically what this um, action does is it opens up a new issue at the beginning of the week, asking my team, what are we planning to get done? We write it out and then it closes it at the end of the week. This way, my manager or directors or anything, they can just go through these issues and be like, oh, okay, that's what Result's been up to. Instead of like having to make, like go and ask us and talk to us when they may not always have time um, to do so. And I just got to do a little plug for myself. <laughs> my favorite action, another favorite action is one that I actually made um, pretty recently. It's not on GitHub Marketplace yet because it's still a work in progress. But basically, I was learning how to use Twitter's API v2 with GitHub Copilot. And I used it to create a tweet. Um, and I was like, oh, this is cool. What would be like an actual valuable use case for this? And I thought, Maybe if open source maintainers went ahead and every time they created a good first issue, it got tweeted out, whether that's on their own, on the maintainer's personal account, or if the, the project has its own um, Twitter account. And I think that's helpful because a lot of times first time contributors are looking for a good first issue and they have a hard time finding them. So I think it's cool to be able to just automatically tweet it out every time it's labeled good first issue. We can go ahead and look at the format, the code, what an action may look like, and what this specific action looks like. So basically, I've named it, I call it, I called it run Python file that sends a tweet, could be a better name. But um, also, I say when I want it to be triggered, I want it to be triggered on issues that are labeled. And now here's where I handle my jobs. Um, and I say, if it's labeled a good first issue, then I want the rest of this to be to, to get triggered. Um, I'm telling it what I want it to run it on. So this is not a self-hosted runner. I'm running it on Ubuntu's latest. I also created an environment variable called issue, which is kind of just grabbing the information about the issue or the, the event that the issue happened on, the issue that the event happened on. Yes, um, basically it's grabbing the URL for it so it's able to tweet it out in the future. 
Um, and then we have a couple of steps here. The first step is to check out all the code in my repository. The second step is to set up Python because that's the language I'm using. And then it says what version I wanna use and which architecture. Then here I have this, this, this run step or command. And basically this is very much like your command line, your terminal. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and install Tweepy with pip3. And then I run my file and I pass in these arguments to it and I've stored these secrets in my repository secrets and GitHub Actions is able to go in and read those. And then here's where I use that environment variable that uses that like long URL. And basically it goes ahead and it tweets like out a good first issue for me, as you can see on on this, this um, slide right here. I don't wanna do it again because I don't want people on Twitter to think I'm a weirdo. Um, so I won't do it for demonstration purposes, but just believe me that it works. Now, back to how it works for um, CICD. All right, so let's talk about CICD first. If you're not familiar with the term, CICD stands for continuous integration. That's the CI part. And then the CD part stands for continuous delivery. Sometimes it stands for continuous deployment. And the reason why it matters it, is, it be, is it's because it makes creating automation for builds, tests, releases easier for everybody. Um, and it's all around, it's all built around that, that concept, right? Of making small changes, checking them in frequently and validating those changes. Um, that way you can catch bugs quicker and it enables you to have better code quality and a happier team because your team is now focused on collaboration and fun and the cool parts of coding, not trying to figure out why you broke the production release. And then it also automates that delivery of applications for different environments, whether it's staging, production, or dev, or, or whatever environments you have. So when I first started at GitHub, I was kind of like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So I built a Git emoji search app um, with using Next.js, Tailwind CSS, and Fuse.js. So I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all that right now. Here it is. It's it's so simple. There's nothing really going on except that it has fuzzy search using Fuse.js. So if I typed in GRA, and there we got grapes, congratulations, and other words that have those letters in it. Um, and I actually use this for more than tapping into GitHub's API, emoji API. Um, I use this to play around with GitHub Actions and learn more about them. And I learned how they can cover all parts of the CI CD pipeline. So let's take a look at a couple of them. There, you can have um, this, this visual testing. I implemented visual testing on my PRs, right? So every time I opened up a PR, it would give me a live preview and check out the code. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like if I open up a PR. Let's go to, let's make a new tab. Get emoji. And oh, look at that, I already have PRs open, so I don't need to create a new one. I have one where I updated the gradient to from blue, pink to green, rather than where it was before, blue, pink to blue. And what I could do instead, or what the reviewer can do instead of deciding to like, okay, now they gotta run my, my PR locally and check out my branch, they can look at this PR and it's created a little link here that gives them a preview of what I've changed. So if we click there, now we see blue, pink, and green, and they're able to check if it visually looks right. All right, let's go back to the slides. Doo -doo. All right. So we also have the ability to do some unit testing where you can go ahead and run NPM CI, NPM run build, and NPM test um, every time there's a push or a pull request or any time that you feel your project needs unit, needs unit test to be run. Um, I also recently learned that you can run visual regression tests as well. Like if you're using Applet tools or Cypress or Mabel or one of those different tools, you can go ahead and say on a push, on a pull request, on whatever, I want us to be able to run these visual regression tests. Um, similarly, you can do accessibility testing. There is a project called Pally. Um, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, but basically you can do, do run Pally and you can get 
an understanding of what vulnerabilities you have in your code that aren't accessible for people who need that accessibility. And another thing is you can check if there's security vulnerabilities with code QL. Um, and in this project, um, we're checking on a push, we're checking on a pull request, but we're also checking on a cron job or a schedule regularly to see if there's any security vulnerabilities within our project. So let's also talk about CD because that was a lot of like the CI part where we're talking about um, testing and, and building our application. We can also use deployment, I mean, we can also use GitHub Actions to deploy our code, to do releases. There's an action that enables you to generate release nodes. There's one that um, handles your production deployment, and you can also use it to package your code. What I'm gonna show you today is how we can package our code into a Docker image and publish it on the GitHub container registry. So let's go ahead and get into that. I'm gonna go and create a new repository. And let's see, no template, the owner is me, and I'm just going to call this um, publish to GCR, GitHub's container registry. I'm going to make this public, and I'll just add a readme file because I have a habit of doing that, and we're going to create a repository. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open this up in github.dev by pressing the dot. Uh, or the period on my keyboard. Um, I've been doing this now that I've um, realized how lazy I am. I just want to edit files right there. I'm going to go ahead and create a file called app.js. And it's not going to have much in here. I'm just going to say console.log. And hopefully this is big enough. Let me get a little bigger. And I'll say we lit at composability summit. Very clean code, amazing, beautiful. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and create a Docker file. You guys don't have to, you all don't have to watch me do that one by one. So I'm gonna copy and paste it for, for um, time's sake. So give me a quick second to copy that code. And here we have the Docker file. It's gonna run my app.js, that's console log logging, all of that. And then the part that we care about is we're gonna go ahead and make our own workflow or our GitHub action. So um, like I had mentioned to you all earlier is, I lost the tab. Like I had mentioned to you all earlier, it has to be within a folder called .github. So actually let me change that to folder .github slash workflows. And anything inside of here, inside of these folders will be recognized as actions. Um, YAML files outside of it, it's not going to, it's not going to pay attention to that. So we're going to call this one publish.yaml. And again, I'm not going to type it all out because I personally don't like watching people code. It's a little boring to me. So we're going to go this way. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it. And we're going to go ahead and check this out. I'll make it a little smaller so we can see more of the file. So I've named this file publish, and I'm saying that I want this to be triggered whenever we push something to this repository. Um, I've called this, I'm gonna call this publish um, to GCR. And then what this is gonna do, it's gonna check out the files inside of my repo, and then it's gonna log into GitHub's container registry. The cool thing about actions is it's storing all of these different values inside of it. So it's, I don't have to generate a GitHub token that's already there. It recognizes that I'm the actor, AKA me. So what it, this will show is actually black girl bites. Um, and then I'm going to give this a name for this, this step. I'm going to say build Docker image and publish on GCR. And I don't want to call this hello. We can call we can replace all of these. Oops. What am I going to call it? Do -do -do. Uh, let's say composability fun. Composability fun. Replace. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and commit these files. Um, because I'm in github.dev, you can't use the terminal. You can use it in code spaces, but not not github.dev, so I'm going to do it this way. 
I'm going to stage all of these files. And I don't do this often, so bear with me if I make any mistakes. And then we're going to go ahead and commit and push it. And I'm going to give it a message that says publishing to GCR. And I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, I want that to happen. And now <laughs> let's see if it actually worked. So I'm going to go ahead and open up github.com, go back to that repository. Do, 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 do. And here we are. We're going to go to the actions tab and we see that an action is currently running um, and we can go ahead and, and drill into it more and see the logs. So it's already logged into the container registry and we see in real time that it's building the Docker image and publishing it on GitHub's container registry. Um, so that's that seems to be pushed or to be happening. Let's continue to wait. Do, do. Cool, that's done. And now it's doing the post cleanup and everything's completed. And what we're gonna go ahead and see if we scroll down is we do have a package here and we can click it. And now we see that on GitHub's container registry, we have this Docker image of me just console logging that were lit at Composability Summit. Um, so that is an example of a GitHub action working in real, real time for us and making things a little bit easier for us. Um, I will end this talk here just to say thank you. Thank you for, for listening in. And also thank you to Composability Summit and Scott for giving me this chance to speak and also learn a little bit more about Composability as well. Bye. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you got some value from that. And by the way, if you want more where that came from, we want to invite you to be a part of our community. Uh-huh. Go to composability.dev and register today. If you've already registered, you know what I'm talking about. And by the way, if you're on Twitter at all, go to JavaScript Jam and follow us. Why? Because every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we go live. Yeah, live on Twitter Spaces. And you can join us and be with us there while we're live. Heck yeah. You know what? And it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or you've been doing this forever. We love everybody being involved. We bring so many people up to the stage. We have so many great conversations. We want you to be a part of it. All right. We'll see you there.